Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Function Junction. I think this is episode number seven. My name is Simon Timms. And I'm Eric Fleming. And today, we're going to look at another trigger type. We're almost there. Uh, <laughs> today, we're going to take a look at event hubs. Uh, so let me take a, a step back and tell you what little I know about event hubs. I've never actually used them in production. But the idea is that if you have a lot of telemetry coming in from a, a bunch of devices, so maybe you have like a bunch of mobile devices out there sending telemetry, or you have a bunch of like IoT devices sending telemetry, so you have a service perhaps that pulls in the temperature of all the fridges that you have produced, which is having cloud-based fridge knowledge is super important. Um, so you get a lot of data coming in. Uh, and you need to have some way of processing all of that data. So Event Hubs is sort of like the, the ingestion point of all of that data. So it is based on service bus technology, but it kind of um, loses some of the functionality of service bus and picks up some other functionality in order to allow for massive processing across like, a bunch of nodes. Uh, so there's no more of like sending messages. This is just like raising events inside of service bus. And uh, you can kind of get access to this event stream, which maintains itself for a couple of days. Uh, this is a configuration setting. So if you have something new that you want to subscribe to, it, you can either like say, okay, subscribe from right now and receive current events, or you can say subscribe from six hours ago and receive all the events from six hours ago going forward. Uh, and the, there's a bunch of other differences in there that I'm not really too sure about but anyway it's it's massively scalable so if you need to ingest say 20 million messages a second this is a service to use all right and you can make an azure function out of it so azure functions are a great example of this because they scale fabulously so if you needed to process 20 million messages a second with azure functions you could probably do it probably better than most other services on azure uh, especially if you have like spiky load, like if you have 20 million messages a second for half the day and 12 messages a second for the rest of the day, Azure Functions would scale really nicely for that. You wouldn't have to worry about scaling it up or down. That will be handled for you. Yep. Okay, so let's give this a try. I have over here this event hub trigger. And again, it's, it's going to look very similar to the service bus triggers that we had before, except it's called an event hub trigger. I'm going to give it a namespace that we're interested in. Uh, so this is, you think of this is like the queue that we're listening to. Uh, and then connection. And that is going to look like in our local settings here, an event hub connection here. So again, you can see like it's using service bus under covers. Uh, so again, I'm just going to give it some shared access key and the, the address here. And you can find this on the portal if you want to create your own. Uh, and then this is just a, a string. This is not looked up anywhere. Uh, and I'm just going to pass this out. I just left the default one in here. So it's just going to print out some stuff to a log stream. Uh, and then on the other end of that, I've got our handy dandy poker program, uh, which is going to send 100 event hub messages. I figure we're going to go big. Let's go big with 100 messages. Nice. Uh, so again, this is pretty simple here. We're using the Microsoft Azure Event Hubs client here. Uh, I'm just going to create it from the same connection string that we had before. The entity path is the, the name that we had, like the queue name that we had. Uh, and then I'm just going to create the messages and send them. So let's go start this up, I guess. Uh, we'll watch these windows open almost certainly on the wrong screen. Yep. <laughs> All right. So drag these around and we'll hit three here and send a bunch of messages here. So this message always takes a little bit of time and there we nice. go. So there's not too much latency, I don't think, between these messages. No. Uh -uh. But there we go. 100 messages sent, starting at zero, of course. So right. sent Wayne Gretzky messages. <laughs> um, I don't know if I wanted to talk too much more about it. Uh, I had I had hoped that the demo would be cooler. I built this little app on my phone because I'm a mobile developer now. I've <laughs> written like two mobile apps. 
Um, and the idea was that using the accelerometer, we would like, produce a bunch of colors and we'd send those to Event Hubs, but I couldn't get it working. Um, the official Event Hub client doesn't seem to work on Xamarin. It just seems to hang. Uh, and the other, the other approach to sending messages to Event Hubs is to send it over HTTPS. Uh, but to do that, you need to send a, a shared access signature for it. And I couldn't get to accept my shared access signature. So we might come back to that in a future episode if I can get it working. Uh, I'm going to stack overflow that one. Hopefully that greater brains than mine can solve it. <laughs> cool. I, I, have, I have one question. Um, so like how the messages were getting in there and getting processed. Um, is there any kind of, kind of polling? Like you did mention that you could send it over HTTP. So at that point, I would imagine that once you'd hit an endpoint or hit whenever that, that HTTP you know, call was hit, it would immediately process the message. But so these seem to be getting processed immediately, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so I, th I think that I could like close this function here. Oh, it's gonna close both of them. Um, let's just open them up individually here. Uh, I don't know what semantics around this are. So let's try sending a bunch of messages and we'll see if, uh, subsequently starting us back up actually assign like we'll actually pull these messages down or if it's going to just look for new messages i think it might just look for new messages okay so we'll, we'll see in a moment though i'm really good at dragging windows from screen to screen here <laughs> yeah i didn't know if it would keep it in some sort of storage temporary storage yeah it looks so it, it did save it all um so I think maybe the way that this stuff works in the back end is that you can keep a, like a local pointer to the last message that you processed. Uh, so, so probably what functions is doing behind the scenes here, and I'm just guessing, is that it is going to write that kind of like pointer to blob storage or table storage or, or some sort of storage service. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then when it starts back up again, it's going to pull out that pointer and go to event hubs and say, hey, give me everything from this pointer forward. Okay. So I don't know if there's a particular way with functions that you could say, like, go back an hour or two hours or something like that and use a different pointer. Uh, that is, I think, something that you can do with a fully-fledged client. And there might be some configuration settings uh, for that in functions, but I haven't seen them documented anywhere okay yeah this is definitely this is something i haven't really had the chance to play around with either so i'd definitely be interested if we can get you know see about getting your app to uh to work and, and watching that happen that would be cool yeah let's try and revisit this in a future episode and we'll maybe yeah. reach out to some people and see if we can get some help with it awesome okay great well Thanks a lot, everyone, for watching this episode of Function Junction, and we'll see you all next time. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>